and now I can upload this new one that I've done as well. So we'll go back to XML Publisher. Let's actually see if this uh, see if the second run of this report is done. So there that is. So again, I haven't done a lot of formatting, so I could have put page breaks in, changed things around a little bit, but you can actually see for given um, given job codes, it looks like as we get to certain pages, um, you know, it gets more interesting in terms of the job codes and that sort of thing. Um, that seems to be what we're getting. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go back to XML Publisher and upload my new template. My report definition. So go back to the template side. I have template files right here. So what I can do now is I can add a brand new template. So the template ID is this one underscore two. And so now I can change this from progress to active, upload that. So now I've got my second template. So what I'm going to have to do here, though, is in order to run it, um, I have to set the properties. I think it actually is uh, in the um, the scheduling side. So I don't think we're going to need to do anything on the first thing. This is where we can actually have it control the template, and that sort of thing. So let's go back and schedule this new report. Report scheduler. So here's where I want to switch the template that I'm using. Save that. Run it. So, so that's uh, so that's uh, so now this will be running as well. Um, there's a really good question I just saw come up. Um, that says, can XML Publisher be used to create complex forms? And the answer uh, to that is uh, definitely can. So, uh, so, while, so, so I'll answer that kind of while we're running, but there's really two ways you can do that. One is obviously you can completely swap out the template conditionally. The second thing that you can do is there's conditional sections that you can set in XML Publisher that basically defines when something gets shown and when it doesn't get shown within there as well. And so uh, and so that, that's an option as well. So let's take a look at uh, Report Manager, see if this new one is done. It looks like it's still running. So uh, before I move on, I, wanna, I just want to make sure that, uh, there we go. So here's the new one that we just ran. So you'll notice that now I have my chart in there. Not that interesting for the departments that have just one job code, but uh, but you get the idea here. So, of course, I just closed the window that I didn't want to close. But that's all right. Um, all right. So we've gone through. We've had that. So so the idea here is that if I want to, again, I can. I was having problems earlier today with this, so I'm not sure if it'll actually pull this up. But if you notice, there is a conditional region, and it actually did not pull the dialog up. So if I insert a conditional region, that's you know the dialog is actually similar in many ways to. What is that? Actually showing up behind. Now it's not even letting me. Not even letting me click on there. So I'm going to have to close out of Word altogether. Ooh, a hard close. All right, let's go to Task Manager. Task. 
Okay. So anyway, um, so we went through. We we showed uh, some of those pieces as well. Um, since we're getting close to the hour, I wanted to show a couple of other things briefly uh, in terms of PeopleSoft. So what I'm going to do, let's see. Uh, all right, so we're going to have to go. There it is. So we'll sign back in. And what I wanted to do is, um, is show a couple of other things. Um, the first one is, let's say that I want to take my connected query or take my XML publisher report and make it promptable. So I want to put some runtime parameters on there. How do I go off and do that? Well, it's actually just as easy as creating a prompt for your um, for the actual um, uh, in one of in your top query. So if I go to reporting tools, query, and then uh, go to query manager, and we'll pull up my percent XML key, and we'll just pull up the top one. So let's say that I want to take one of these things and set that up as a prompt. And so, uh, so let's see. So from this perspective, let's take the, the it's not interesting to do the company. So let's do the location. So, uh, so from a location perspective, what I can do is I can add my prompt here, and then um, so what I'm going to do is put this as a promptable field, new prompt. Uh, so it's going to prompt against that. I'm going to basically make it so it's not forcing the table edit, so I can type in whatever I want and click OK, and now I'll save this. So now I've added a prompt to my query. So what I should be able to do now is go back to my XML Publisher report, go back to the report scheduler, pull this up right here. And so this one requires prompts. It's telling me that I need to do that. That makes sense. So now you'll notice that there's a link here for updating parameters. So if I click on Update Parameters, I can put in my location. So if I want to, I could put uh, KUDE, so we'll do KUDE00, perfect. So now I've updated the parameters. So by doing that, when I run my XML Publisher report, it's only going to get the data for that. So I just click Run, click OK, and now it's running it now with these parameters. So it's just as simple as doing that. which. Again, if you've done a lot with SQR or Crystal um, or even App Engine, a lot of times you have to create a run control page to accept parameters, set up special process definitions, link it all together, you know, deal with all of those sorts of things. Um, and so again, by doing it definitionally, you don't have to do any of that. You just add your prompt to your query, run your query, and everything looks good. And so you know, that's another key piece from that perspective. So um, I want to go back and talk about bursting, because bursting, I think, is one of the most important concepts um, that you, of things you can do with XML Publisher, because it really takes it from being something that people have to, you know, that's just essentially a query tool where people are running things for themselves, to really turning it into a production reporting tool that you can deploy throughout your organization. So if I go back to my report definition, 